You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Monday 31st of March 2014. Charlene Down scapegoat detective suing Lancashire police for £500,000 over mishandled murder investigation. Calls for inquiry as figures show 27% of London's prisoners are Muslim. Furious fanatic who trains 7-7 bombers sets up Islamic primary school in Britain. Terrorism prevention list withers on vine amid political and media fallout. France, National Front doubles council members and gains 11 mayoral seats. Gay activists hurl theses at German parents protesting pro-gay school curriculum. Ireland, judge apologises for Muslims who think they can actually beat their wives. Putin laughs, journalists face over Europe's American-made missile defence system. Thought for the day, feline woof. And finally, two for one day, Monday. UK News. Charlene Downs scapegoat detective suing Lancashire police for £500,000 over mishandled murder investigation. A detective who says she was made a scapegoat for a mishandled investigation into the murder of a teenage girl is suing police for up to £500,000 in the High Court. Jan Besant was forced to quit her job after Lancashire police failed to bring anyone to justice over the disappearance of 14-year-old Charlene Downs, who was groomed by a child sex gang linked to takeaway food shops in Blackpool. The teenager's body has never been found. Two men were charged with murder, but former detective Sergeant Besant was blamed for the collapse of the case because of the corp poor quality of surveillance tapes that formed a crucial part of the evidence. Miss Besant, 48, won an appeal against a disciplinary hearing, ruling that her conduct in the investigation fell below the standard expected. Her lawyers say Lancashire police knowingly, or with reckless indifference, accused her of lack of integrity. Police believe Charlene was a member of a group of young girls who had sex with older men in return for gifts before she vanished in 2003. When a supergrass named two men allegedly involved in Charlene's murder, they were secretly bugged. D.S. Besant listened to the tapes and spent two years writing up their conversations. But the Crown Prosecution Service said there were grave doubts over the quality of the recordings and accuracy of the trans of transcripts. Lancashire Constabulary was not available to comment. World date, I bet they weren't. Call for inquiry as figures show 27% of London's prisoners are Muslim. More than a quarter of London's prison population are Muslims, prompting urgent calls for inquiry into what is happening in the justice system. Official figures have revealed that record levels of Muslim people are serving jail sentences and the numbers are still growing. Across England and Wales, the proportion has risen from 8% a decade ago to 14% now. In London, the figure is an astonishing 27%, which is more than double the 12% of the capital's population who are Muslim. In two prisons, Feltham and Isis, a third of the inmates, were Muslim. The data was obtained by Sadiq Khan, the lawyer and shadow justice secretary, who is himself, obviously, a Muslim. He told the Evening Standard that an inquiry was vital to explain why the increase is happening. What's really worrying is the rise year after year in the number of Muslims behind bars, he added. We need to know why that's the case if we're to stop this rising further, reduce crime and prevent people needlessly becoming victims. Half of the top ten prisons with the highest Muslim populations are in London, including Belmarsh, where the percentage has risen since 2010 from 19 to 29%, Brixton, 24%, Pentonville, 28%, Thameside, 25%, and Wormwood Scrubs, 27%. World at eight. It isn't rocket science. There are more Muslims coming into the country and committing crime. Furious fanatic who trains 7-7 bombers sets up Islamic primary school in Britain. Sajil Shahid, 38, caught for violence against British troops and ran a training camp in Pakistan where known terrorists learned how to make bombs and is a terror suspect who trained the ringleader of the 7-7 terrorist bombings in London has been allowed to set up an Islamic primary school teaching children as young as three, the Mail on Sunday reveals. One of his graduates was Mohammed Sadiq Khan, who led the gang of four suicide bombers on the deadliest terrorist attack ever committed in Britain, killing 52 people on the London Underground in a bus on July 7, 2005. 
Terrorism prevention list withers on Vine amid political and media fallout. Watchdog says ending of power to relocate suspects away from home areas, plus embarrassing high-profile abscondments, has seen the system overlooked. There are no longer any terror suspects subjected to special preventions and investigation measures after the system, which replaced control orders, has been allowed to wither on the Vine. Theresa May, the Home Secretary, has confirmed to MPs that there is currently nobody subject to a Terrorism Prevention and Investigation Measures Notice, TPIN, with the last one allowed to lapse on February 10th this year. European News Gay activists hurl feces at German parents protesting pro-gay school curriculum. As parents in Germany have protested a new pro-homosexual sexual diversity curriculum in their schools, homosexual activists have attacked them by hurling feces and destroying their property, according to the Observatory on Intolerance and Discrimination Against Christians, which documents anti-Christian incidents in Europe. Protesters were physically attacked and it was felt that the police failed to protect the parents' basic right of assembly, said a statement from the observatory describing incidents at recent rallies in Baden-Württemberg and Cologne. According to eyewitnesses, says the observatory, Christian's parents were shouted at with obscenities. They were spat at, eggs were thrown, and little bags with feces or paint also thrown. Cables of loudspeakers were torn out, the organisation says. Pages were ripped out of the Bible and used to wipe back sides, then formed into a ball and thrown at the parents. Christians were deeply hurt in this process. At least one banner was snatched and destroyed in front of the eyes of the parents. Marshals were targeted with pepper pepper sprays. Shouting by counter-demonstrators made the planned public speaking party impossible. World of date. Now I'm not homophobic, but this behaviour alongside that of Britain's Alan Cummings is what I find truly disgusting and despicable about many homosexuals. Cummingly recently, according to the Daily Mail and New York Observer, recently whipped out his mobile phone on a crowded lift to show everyone a photo of himself being teabagged by a rugby star. Now, if you are like me, you will just have to search out teabagging for yourself. I had thought along the lines of Typhoo Tea, but then I was unpleasantly surprised. France. National Front doubles council members and gains 11 mayoral seats. The gains by the National Front were somewhat less dramatic than predicted last week by the party itself after the first round of voting for mayors and city council members. But exit polls suggested that the party would end up with about 10 mayoral seats in cities of more than 10,000. According to the preliminary official results from the Interior Ministry, at least two of those victories were in sizable municipalities, Béziers in the south and Fréjus not far from Marseille, with populations of 70,000 and 52,000. The ministry also said that the nationwide that nationwide the National Front had elected 934 local council members. It had fewer than 500 previously, so this was a substantial increase and it allows it to have a presence in the number of localities even where it does not have mayors. Marine Le Pen, the party's leader, gave a resolute speech in which she reasserted that the National Front has been born as an autonomous political force. She added this is only the beginning, alluding to the European parliamentary elections that will be held at the end of May, in which her party is expected to do well. Senate elections will be held in September. Bézier was won by Robert Menard, who was endorsed by the National Front, although he did not run as a party member. He is a former head of Reporters Without Borders, who styles himself as a political maverick. While the, while the National Front lost the largest prize it was seeking, the city of Perpignan, Perpignan in southern France, with a population of 117,000, it won Fréjus with a young candidate, David Racheline. According to Le Monde website, reaction to his victory led to clashes requiring the police to maintain order. Ireland, judge apologises for Muslims think they can actually beat their wives. Anthony Halpin asks for forgiveness over hurt caused by unfortunate reference made in court. A district court judge has apologised for an unfortunate and incorrect remark which he made about Muslims in court. Judge Anthony Halpin made the remark that Muslims think they can actually beat their wives in Talak District <laughs> District Court on Thursday. Civil liberties and migrant groups had yesterday urged him to withdraw the comments. The Islamic Cultural Centre of Ireland said yesterday that in this case it was restricted in what it could say due to the limited nature of the comments as reported in the media. Spokesman Dr Ali Salim explained he was not fully aware of the full context of what was said but added, I firmly believe that a woman's position is a source of pride for every Muslim woman according to Islam. <laughs> 
World at eight, you can pull the other one. Let every victim of an honour beating or killing, female genitali- genital mutilation or sexual abuse be prideful of their treatment at the hands of Islam. This includes the rape victims in Saudi and Qatar who, set, who were sent to jail or sentenced to death for adultery. What a record. World news. Putin laughs. Journalists face over at Europe's American-made missile defence system. When an interviewer recently confronted Vladimir Putin about Europe's American-made missile defence system, the president of the Russian Federation couldn't help but laugh right in his face. According to the journalist, NATO's missile defence system is pointed at and designed to protect Europe from the nuclear threat posed by Iran, not Russia. Putin's reaction is a must-see. Interview, NATO claims the missile shield was not built against you, but against Iran. Putin begins to laugh almost uncontrollably. Putin, you really make me laugh. God bless you, because it's almost time to finish the day. Indeed, it's already time to go to sleep. At least I get home in a good humour. What's even more humorous is the seriousness of the interviewer's subsequent reaction to being laughed at. To watch the video, just go to YouTube and type in Watch This Reaction, Putin Laughs Right in This Journalist's Face. Lovely. Thought for the day. Feeling woof? Or to be or not to be? And by feline, I mean our feline friends. In the famous Shakespeare play, I mean TB as in tuberculosis. I'm not surprised at the headlines that have lambasted the nationals and even the news for the last few days on cats spreading BTB, which is the bovine TB to their owners. So far, only two have emerged, mother and daughter, and the girl looks to be mixed race, although this has nothing to do with this infection, one would hope. She got it from a kitten, and now, of course, cats have replaced badgers in the firing line for the mass murderers of animals. Miss Livings, or rather, uh, Miss Livings, rather a misnomer under the circumstances, acquired only one of the many strains of TB that inhabit our country nowadays, and the UK still has the highest rates of non-bovine TB, alias human-to-human TB, in Western Europe. Though the Daily Mail cheerfully adds that the vast majority of sufferers include people not inoculated against the disease, including migrants from Africa and Eastern Europe. Now, am I strange in thinking that this disease, human TB, was virtually eradicated before our mass genocide alias immigration began? So everyone with a pet cat is on the lookout for what? Snuffles, weight loss and no doubt breathing heavily into his owner's face because I cannot think how else, unless you roll in your cat's faeces or drink his milk, you can get this particular form of TB. It will assume the same place as retarded people who lock their untrained and unhappy dogs in the same room as their babies and wait for the result to be lathered all over the news with a weeping and a wailing and a renting of garments. Plus, of course, the usual chattering class's impressive array of flowers, teddy bears and dolls. I'm reading from an article on this nasty disease when it attacks cattle. And if you think there are not a lot of cattle left in fields for any length of time any more than thousands of chickens are raised in homemade sheds, Then we all know that all animals and fowl raised for meat or eggs or both rarely see the light of day, let alone a badger at night, which is when badgers go out like foxes. Cats do not fight with badgers. I have known both and they don't fight. Cats avoid badgers like the plague. They are bigger and far more used to protecting their own territory than your average domestic felix. Dogs fight badgers and sometimes dogs chase and fight cats. So this tenuous link to our feline friends might have come from a dog who'd fought a badger or indeed a fox, who cats also get on with rather well, I've found. As for small rodents, well, they're in short supply nowadays anyway, unless they're out in the country. And let's face it, you can get the black death from some rats, let alone BTB. Bovine tuberculosis in back cattle and badgers. For decades, discussion and controversy has raged about bovine tuberculosis. For the Badger Trust, it has sidelined other major issues, notably persecution, because of the insistence led by farming unions that BTB will be solved only if badgers are slaughtered. Culled is the word they prefer to use. Unperturbed by conclusive scientific evidence, the result of a near 10-year, £50 million taxpayer-funded research programme by the Independent Scientific Group that killing large number of badgers would have no meaningful impact on the spread and control of this disease. They have continued to call for widespread targeted action. Badger Trust totally rejects this argument, but to put the issue into some context, here we answer some of the points most frequently raised about BTB. Before milk was pasteurised, bovine TB in humans was common and often fatal. Today it's rare. The human form of TB is more usually caused by 
Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is classed as M. tuberculosis. Cattle are the main hosts, hence the name bovine TB. But the disease affects many other mammals, from bison in Canada to brush-tailed possum in New Zealand, buffalo in southern Africa and white-tailed deer in the United States. How do cattle catch TB? Principally from other cattle by breathing in bacilli expelled by infected animals as tiny aerosol droplets. It may also be caught through contamination of feeding and watering sites and from infected wildlife including badgers and deer and possibly from other farmed animals such as deer and camelids, llamas, alpacas etc. The risk of disease spread is greatest in enclosed, poorly ventilated areas, notably over wintering barns and sheds where cattle spend months confined together. But any contact between cattle, as shows and markets, for example, in livestock lorries or at single fence farm boundaries where they come into contact with other cattle, cattle are other obvious transmission points. On its website, DEFRA says cattle-to-cattle -cattle transmission is a serious cause of disease spread. The independent scientific group in its final report describes cattle-to-cattle -cattle transmission as very important in high-instance areas and the main cause of disease spread to new areas. That said, it's worth adding that despite years of research, research transmission routes, for example, cattle to badger and badger to cattle, are still not properly understood. So not all badgers are infected. Far from it. Most badgers are healthy. The randomised badger culling trials, which form the basis of ICG's final report and recommendations, show that even in BTB hotspots, less than one in seven badgers were infected, and when roadkill badgers from seven hotspot counties were examined, the figures were almost the same, 15% infected. This might be explained by acquired immunity in a proportion of badgers, or simply that badgers do not easily infect each other. Let's look at the facts. Here in the UK, a BTB epidemic that began in the 1930s spiralled out of control and by 1960 was still infecting 16,000 of the UK's cattle. It was brought under control and all but eradicated by the cattle-based controls. No badgers have been killed or implicated. Then in the last decades of the 20th century, BTB began to increase again. The reasons were not clear. Farming organisations blame badgers, but in fact the increase followed a marked relaxation of cattle testing, slaughter and movement of controls and movement controls introduced and, of course, immigration. In the two years, 2009-2010, there's been a 15% reduction in BTB due to improved testing of cattle, movement controls and improved cattle husbandry. This improvement has been achieved without any badgers being killed. The farming press reports that large numbers of diseased badgers are dying in agony and that culling would end that misery and lead to healthy badgers living alongside healthy cattle. Pure fiction. It's just a bit of clumsy public relations to try and justify a cull. There's absolutely no ed evidence to support the claim that BTB is killing large number of badgers. As we've already said, TB in badgers is rarely fatal. Badger Trust now strongly believes that an injectable vaccine, and ultimately an oral vaccine, provides a very positive way forward in the long-term control of this disease. The silver bullet remains a cattle vaccine which will not only protect cattle from the disease, but will also allow the UK farming industry to export cattle to EU countries. A test is being developed which will differentiate between a vaccinated cow and an infected cow. This will require acceptance within the EU. So the badger culls are a useless and cruel system, especially when in truth we allow millions of people into this country untested for TB or any of its various other branches of lung diseases. However, tens of thousands of diseased cattle slaughtered after testing positive for bovine tuberculosis are being sold for human consumption by DEFRA, the Food and Farming Ministry has said. The raw meat from around 28,000 diseased animals a year is banned by most supermarkets and burger chains, according to the Sunday Times. Tesco, for example, rejects it because of public health concerns surrounding the issue of BTB and its risks to consumers. But it is being sold to some caterers and food processors and finding its way into schools, hospitals and the military, or being processed into products such as pies and pastes. Now it can be revealed that milk from the thousands of cattle infected with TB may also have entered the food chain. In the past, infection to humans via milk was common, and although this milk would have been pasteurised, so-called raw milk is becoming more popular. It's well known that farmers, workers in abattoirs and vets are most likely to get BTB from cattle. Also, if people drink unpasteurised milk, which was the main route of infection in the past. TB caused by M. bovis is diagnosed in a very small number of people in the UK every year. The majority of cases are in people over 65 years old who drank infected unpasteurised milk in the past or in those of any age who picked up the infection abroad. 
The number of human TB cases due to M. bovis infection is closely monitored by Public Health England, Public Health Wales and Health Protection Scotland. Overall, human TB caused by M. bovis accounts for less than 1% of the total TB cases diagnosed in the UK every year. Transmission of M. bovis can occur between animals, from animals to humans, and more rarely from humans to animals and between humans. Transmission to people can occur through consumption of unpasteurised milk and unpasteurised milk products from infected animals. It is also possible to contract M. bovis infection by inhaling the bacteria shed by infectious animals in respiratory and other secretions, or through contamination of un- unprotected cuts or abrasions in the skin while handling infected animals or their carcasses, although this is rare. Last year, there were just over 9,000 cases of TB, a 5% increase on the year before, according to figures from the Health Protection Agency. The main risk area is still London, with 3,588 cases reported in 2011, accounting for 40% of the UK total. Nearly three-quarters of those suffering the disease were were those not born in the UK. Mike Mandelbaum, chief executive of the charity TB Alert, said the truth is that TB never really went away in the UK and has been steadily rising here from around 5,000 cases a year at the end of the 80s to 8,500 in 2007-2008. TB is a disease usually associated with certain high-risk groups such as those with HIV, those from Eastern Bloc countries and Asia and those living in crowded living conditions. But anyone can get it. On Min, Con, on Min Con, a consultant at St Mary's Hospital in Paddington, London, said that the rates of the disease are continuing to rise and that the UK has the highest rates in Europe. His research has found that a fifth of immigrants to Britain from high-risk areas had latent TB, but the current guidelines for screening men around 75% of these cases will be missed. So the real figure may be substantially higher. But despite all facts and figures, there will be a large proportion of propaganda against cats, as there has been for some time against various breeds of dogs, and much of this anti-publicity does have some roots in some very few cases. But the main thing is the attitude of our establishment towards domestic animals, and it isn't good. Whatever the whys or wherefores of this cat-to-human case of BTB, it isn't the fault of the cat, if indeed it ever was. The great British public have kept cats for hundreds of years without harmful effects. Indeed, we've even had leprosy in our medieval past, which was eradicated and is now back with a vengeance. But you never hear of those cases, do you? Spread human to human, as most are diseases and viruses. Although a very small portion of bovine TB is spread by cattle to cattle, and maybe in rare cases onto other mammals, still the greatest contagion of all times is the human condition. No other country in the world allows hordes of unmonitored and unchecked human beings into a country from or through other countries which still have many of these nasty diseases rampant amongst their populations. We have to acquire passports for dogs and cats and immunisation certificates galore and yet foreigners can walk in with, and many do, terrible diseases which spread amongst their communities unspoken and unnoticed. The lo- their local GPs are often of their own ethnicity, so the whole matter gets shoved on the back burner. Of course, there is a question of what sort of meat is used for domestic pets. It would seem that there could be TB-infected meat from cattle going into pet foods. Who is there to check? A cat could get it from infected meat or, without stretching a point, infected milk. And yet another scenario is obvious. Many of the immigrants come from Africa and Asia and Eastern Europe, and many of these migrants have homes back in the old country, to which they travel regularly and encourage relations to come over from. It is not beyond the boundaries of human behaviour for these self-same people, when on holiday at home, to revert to the eating and drinking habits they left behind, unpasteurised milk and diseased meat. They can easily bring it into the UK again and reinfect more people. Relations from the same family can be brought in for marriages, carrying yet more diseases, and so it goes on, whilst our media are pouncing on the badgers and cats, etc., whilst the answer may be more solvable and obvious. It's almost too late to start examinations and inoculations for TB or BTB, because our food chains are being compromised, as has our population, and you can blame sloppy governmental practices for that. We have not cut down on the amounts of immigrants and still they pour in. Diseases come in with them. They import food from the homeland into this country without any checks at all. Lorries come in every day full of migrants and germs. We operate in this country an open-door Marxist policy to all and sundry. And yet still DEFRA have the barefaced nerve to penalise certain farmers for taking money where they can, selling their meat where they can, when they're when there are no such penalties for ordinary migrants doing the same thing.
How much bush meat has gone into the local takeaway food? We already know that the Muslims fancy making a human kebab, so God knows what we're eating now, I shudder to think. But as the papers say, we can always pull the blinkers over your eyes and blame cats, dogs, badgers, pigeons, little green men, instead of the brain shortages we seem to have when it comes to importing foul people and their habits into our society, or rather what is left of it. I back the cats myself. And finally, two for one day Monday. Two young boys walked into a pharmacy one day, picked out a box of tampons and proceeded to the checkout counter. The pharmacist at the counter asked the older boy, Son, how old are you? Eight, the boy replied. The man continued, Do you know what these are used for? The boy replied, Not exactly, but they aren't for me. They're for him. He's my brother. He's four. Oh, really? The pharmacist replied with a grin. Yes, the boy said. We saw it on TV that if you use these, you'd be able to swim, play tennis and ride a bike. Right now, he can't do none of those. And one for our more mature listeners. Thank goodness there's a name for this disorder. Adjectiva- age-activated attention deficit... deficit di- age-activated attention deficit disorder. This is how it manifests. I decide to water my garden. As I turn on the hose in the driveway, I look over at my car and decide it needs washing. As I start towards the garage, I notice mail on the porch table that I brought up from the mailbox earlier. I decide to go through the mail before I wash the car. I lay my car keys on the table, put the junk mail on the garbage in under the table, and notice that the can is full. So I decide to put the bills back on the table and take out the garbage first. But then I think, since I'm going to be near the mailbox, when I take out the garbage anyway, I may as well pay the bills first. I take my checkbook off the table and see there's only one check left. My extra checks are in my desk in the study. So I go inside the house to my desk where I find the can of Pepsi I've been drinking. I'm going to look for the checks. But first I need to push the Pepsi aside so I don't accidentally knock it down. The Pepsi is getting warm and I decide to put it in the refrigerator to keep it cold. As I head towards the kitchen with the Pepsi, a vast a vase of flowers on the counter catches my eye. They need water. I put the Pepsi on the counter and discover my reading glasses that I've been searching for all morning. I decide I'd better put them back on my desk, but first I'm going to water those flowers. I set the glasses back on the counter, fill a container with water, and suddenly spot the TV remote. Someone left it on the kitchen table. I realise that tonight, when we go to watch TV, I'll be looking for the remote. But I won't remember that it's on the kitchen table, so I decide to put it back in the den where it belongs. But first, I'll water the flowers. I pour some water in the flowers, but quite a bit of it spills on the floor. So I set the remote back on the table, get some towels, and wipe up the spill. Then I head down the hall trying to remember what I was planning to do. At the end of the day, the car isn't washed, the bills aren't paid, there's a warm can of Pepsi sitting on the counter, the flowers don't have enough water, there's still only one check in my checkbook, I can't find the remote, I can't find my glasses. And I don't remember what I did with the car keys. Then, when I'm trying to figure out why nothing got done today, I'm really baffled because I know I was busy all day and I'm really tired. I realise this is a serious problem, and I'll try and get some help for it, but first, I'll check my email. Do me a favour, forward this message to everyone you know, because I don't remember who I've sent it to. Don't laugh. If this isn't you yet, your day is coming. You've been listening to The World at at 8. You've been listening to The World at 8. I'm Lynn Mozart, and I wish you all a very good night.